A reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people will have shown hospitalities to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess God's name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke chapter 14. Glory to you, O Lord. On the Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was, he was being carefully watched. And when he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this man your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and, everyone, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers and relatives or rich neighbors. If you do, they, w- they, may, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet... Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. In today's gospel reading, Jesus takes on the social code of his day, the social etiquette, so to speak. Jesus was at a dinner party of a prominent person among the Pharisees, and and he was paying attention to the guests who were there and noticed how they were acting. And he noticed that they wanted to sit in the best seats at the party, and he noticed ultimately that the people hosting the party wanted a return invitation. They wanted their dinner guests to turn around and invite them over for dinner the next week. It's an important thing to understand about the world that Jesus lived in. It was that Jesus lived in an honor and shame culture where status was pretty much everything. And one of the key places where status was shown was around the table at a meal. Guests of honor were seated close to the host. 
while those of, of lesser importance were seated further away and those that were not invited at all didn't matter at all. Status was almost everything. Status was important and, and also at the same time could be very fragile. To, to be invited to a, a better position at the table of an important host wasn't simply an honor. It would have also been very, had real and very, tan, very real and very tangible benefits to your business life as well. And at the same time, to be invited at a lower position could affect your life as well as in not getting the respect and dignity on the streets after the party was over. Now, what Jesus was talking about, of course, he isn't necessarily only talking about the table or a party and ab about inviting people over to your house for dinner and the, and the pressures of returning the favor. What Jesus is talking about is so much more broader and, and deeper than that. What Jesus is saying may, may seem to be a simple lesson about guest list etiquette. But it involves so much more. It's about the exploitation and abuse of power and status. Jesus says that a guest list shouldn't include friends and family and rich neighbors, those who are in a position to give them something in return or to pay them back, which was the norm. But ha by having this expectation, the host abuses their power by placing their guests in debt to them. And the cycle could be unending, putting more and more people into greater debt. But what Jesus is saying to the host and to us is that we should invite the less fortunate, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, those who cannot return the favor, so to speak. So, my friends, what does that mean for us as a church? What does that mean for us as a country, what does that mean for us as a world community? Plenty, I'm sure. As I was reflecting on this passage this, this past week, I thought about ministry, the first ministry that I was a part of as a pastor in St. Paul, and every Thursday night we would gather together at what was called a wellness center where we had free medical and, and mental health care for people, about 150 to 175 people every week centered around this, this free hearty meal, many people coming from off the streets and sitting around the table at dinner listening to stories and breaking and, and the lines, seeing that the lines being blurred between those that came to serve and those that came to be served. And many of our people that came did not feel welcome in church. For many, they had been judged out of the church because of how they looked or how they smelled or how they acted. And as leaders and as a community together, we would often ask ourselves, who is not here? Who is not at the table, so to speak? And also, what's getting in the way? And could it be us? We as a church, not just Nordland, but as a, a worldwide church, we don't often ask the question, who is not here? Who is not at the table? Who is excluded from the table? We don't talk much about the boundaries that we often create that exclude them from having a voice, from being a part of a community. Sometimes our traditions can get in the way of others feeling welcome. Sometimes the history of the church, not only our own church, but the church at large, gets in the way. We may be welcoming to people to come and experience what we do and to experience Jesus, but does it go beyond that to allowing their voices and ideas heard that may be different than ours? 
sometimes our biases of certain people get in the way of them feeling welcome. And the list could go on and on and on. I mean, for example, imagine if people who were living on the streets, so to speak, were, were began showing up at Nordland. How would we act? How would we act? And more importantly, how, would they feel welcome? Would they feel like they belong here? We create, we can create barriers from allowing others from being a part of a community, a Christ-centered community that is about cherishing and loving all of God's children where all are welcome, all are valued, and all are loved. So my friends, the question we have for us this morning, who is not at the table? Who is not a part of this community because they don't feel welcome? Whether they are people you personally know or don't know. And how do we begin to change something deep inside of ourselves to allow for other voices to be a part of this community of faith? Now, you received those colored cards when you came in this morning. And before you leave today, if not before you leave worship, before you get home, or when you get home, write on the card someone you know. We all know people that do not feel welcome at church. We all do. We just have to think about that. We may have to dig deep. Write their name on there. Or maybe even write why they, do, why they wouldn't feel welcome at Nordland. And hang on to it throughout this week and beyond, a week or two, and put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, or put it someplace so you can, that can remind you as a reminder to you, a reminder to us to constantly be working on this together, to ask ourselves and each other about the barriers that we keep, that pe- keep people from feeling welcome. Or maybe another thing, write down what you yourself need to do to help make the church, not only Nordland, but the church worldwide to become a more welcoming community. Now, all of this may take some thought for us. It may take some work for us to even think it through. Now, to be sure, this is, this is not only a question for Nordland, as I mentioned. It's a question for the church at large. Large, who is not at the table? And I know it's messy work, I no doubt, because it might involve rethinking how we do certain things. But it's important and necessary work for us, for those of us who claim to be followers in the way of Jesus. For true welcome true hospitality is not saying those words all are welcome or putting up a big banner on the outside of the doors of the church that say all are welcome or having the best bars and best coffee which Nordland has. (laughs) True welcome and true hospitality is about listening to each other's stories which we do really well creating an environment and a culture that allows all to have a voice. And then together we, we become a constantly transformed and changed community that embraces more and more, widening the circle of God's grace even broader and wider and wider. My friends, may we be a part of the way of Jesus just as the first Christians did, were called to be people of the way, is what they called it. May we live into Jesus' invitation to us to live differently, to break the rules of what, what have you done for me lately and the way it's always been done to value others, not because of what they can do for us, 
but because they are beloved children of God like you and me. My friends, this is good news. This is good news. When others are seen as beloved children of God just like you and me, all those barriers start to fade away. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Have a happy and safe Labor Day weekend.